Welcome, welcome, welcome to this channel, Baruch Habba Bashem Yahuwah. And um, today we are going to do the second part of a new in-depth study named spiritual reality or obsession, I would say, and obsession, because there's also a whole chapter spent on that one. And the part two or chapter two that we do is called spiritual reality. It's relationships. One reality and conduct. We ought to remember that there is a thing before the Most High called reality. The difficulty with many believers is that they try to manufacture it. They attempt to produce this reality before the Most High, with the result that they copy or imitate what the Most High requires. Though is it's uh, is uh, trueness the real thing manifested in our lives? That which we do by ourselves is man-made. A counterfeit and not the genuine thing. How very vain it is for man to act on the basis of doctrine. For all he has is nothing more than an outward conduct. He does not have the true article, the reality. Because of this, we must learn to live before the Most High, our Father of this universe, according to what we verily are. We should ask Him to cause us to contact that which is spiritually real. Sometimes we are close to being false simply because we know too much and according to doctrines instead of following the leading of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the spirit of our Father, the Most High Himself. Whenever we act on the basis of doctrine, we are not touching reality. So as long as we think that we can do the things by ourselves, by copying, making a copy constantly of everything, we have not touched the true reality. The reality as the Most High means. One uh, once a brother narrated his experience as follows. A brother of mine had greatly offended me. One day he came to talk with me and I said, brother, it does not matter. There is nothing to, to it. But deep down in me was a feeling which said, this matter is not right for he always does such things. He has done it to many others as well as to me. I felt I should seriously re reprimand him. But I reasoned that if I should gravely reprove him, he might be hurt and say that I would not forgive him. If instead I were to shake hands with him and invite him to a meal, would this not show that I could love the brother? Nevertheless, there was a strong conviction within me, saying, you must speak the truth to him today. Show him wherein his conduct is wrong. After having struggled within for over 15 minutes, I realized that I finally spoke the truth to him. It is a fact 
that sometimes it is more valuable to reprove than to shake hands. Though we may maintain a gentle appearance which causes people to praise us, there is no spiritual value before the Most High, our Father. The question is, does our conduct follow the dictate of dead doctrine or of the leading of the Holy Spirit? The above mentioned brother genuinely loved his brother in his heart, yet the issue was not over the heart but over spiritual reality. One day a believer had a strife with one of the members of his family. The latter, being very violent, struck the believer's face. At that moment the brother remembered what Matthew 5 instructs, Whosoever smiteth thee on, on thy right cheek, turn to him the other one also. This is verse 39 of chapter 5 of the book of Matthew. He, he thought that being a believer, he ought to act like one. So he turned the other cheek. Having done it, he was so um, exasperated afterwards that he could not sleep for two nights. As far as his conduct went, he had acted in accordance with the word of the scripture. Nevertheless, he was so enraged that for two nights he lost his sleep. This plainly betrays the fact that he had not touched the spiritual reality. His conduct was not out of life, it was not the real thing. And many believers sense that they have a deficiency in that they are unable to distinguish true from false. They are unable, and this is still going on unto the day of today, they are unable to distinguish true from false. Many believers have difficulties with this still. Unable to discern what is of the Most High, our Father, and what is not of Him. And thus from the enemy, the reason for such a deficiency, judging from spiritual experience, lies in their failure to have touched spiritual reality. Had they made contact with that reality, then the moment any unreal thing might appear before their eyes, they would instantly recognize it for what it was. The power of discerning comes out of what one has already seen. If we have touched spiritual reality in a certain matter, no one can ever deceive us in that particular matter. A truly saved believer has at least touched the spiritual reality of salvation. So a truly saved believer has at least touched the spiritual reality of salvation. It is consequently difficult to deceive him in this matter. Similarly, he who has touched the spiritual reality of a certain matter will only naturally detect the unreal thing as soon as it appears and as he encounters the counterfeit there arises a strange power within him which pushes away the counterfeit. The reason we are so easily deceived is because we often deceive ourselves. The self-deceived are prone to be deceived by others. If we do not see something in ourselves, how can we see it in others? 
So if we do not see it in ourselves, how can we see it in others? It is when we come to know ourselves that we commence to know others. None who do not know themselves are able to know others. But once having come through the Most High's dealing to see what we are, we naturally recognize what others are. If in a particular matter you have received the Most High's dealing and touched the reality, you know how the Holy Spirit or Ruach HaKodesh of our Father works in you. By this knowledge you instantly discern whether another person is acting on his own or is moved by the Spirit of the Most High Himself, the Universal Father of this universe. Spiritual discernment comes only after we ourselves have contacted the reality. So spiritual discernment comes only after we ourselves have contacted the reality. The one who has not touched reality deceives two persons, himself and the one who is spiritually in the same category. He cannot deceive those who know what is of the Holy Spirit and who live in the Holy Spirit. He has absolutely no way to deceive the assembly. He may consider himself spiritual, but for some unknown reason the assembly does not say Amen. We know that whatever the assembly does, Uh, in a minute, we, we know that whatever the assembly does, not amen a person. It is time for that person to confess his sins. If brothers and sisters do not feel like saying amen, that person must have falsehood in him. Some brothers and sisters trouble and burden the assembly, not simply with their sins, but also with their good, that which issues from themselves. Sin is easily recognized, but the good which proceeds from self is not so easily detected. Though it is far from the Most High and far from spiritual reality, it is a matter of great concern to behold how often believers regard themselves as having come into some certain thing after they have labored over it when in actuality they have not yet touched its spiritual reality. We believe that when uh, one encounters reality it will result in life, but when one does not encounter reality it will end in death. One brother performs a particular act before the Most High, the Great I Am. He touches life and causes others to touch life. Another brother also takes a certain action. He feels he has done well, yet others do not meet life in him. And they are not edified. Instead, of admiring his action, they reject it. It is because this brother's conduct comes out of himself and the consequence is death instead of life. We must learn to live in the Holy Spirit, otherwise we may exercise good, so-called good conduct, without touching the spiritual reality. What is meant by living in the Holy Spirit? 
it means not doing anything by or out from ourselves. So this also means that you are not acting on behalf of your own understanding, of your own so-called wisdom and knowledge, which is nothing more than man-created wisdom that is spoon-fed to you by other men, such as parents, relatives, people in your local neighborhood, uh, the school system, and so on, so on. The ones you work with, so it is spirit, um, living in the Holy Spirit means that you completely live in the Holy Spirit and that you allow that each and every step is ordered by the Most High Himself and that He leads you in all your ways and that you surrender yourself to that and that you stop filling in beforehand what you can do or uh, what you think you can do and not allowing yourself because of impatience to let the things and answers come to you by the Father himself through his magnificent Holy Spirit. Whatever is done by the self is of the flesh Exactly, and that is what people forget. Everything, whatever they come up with, is something that comes from the flesh. And that is exactly what Shatan loves, because everything, he knows that the flesh is weak, so um, he can poke into that, and he can make you believe that it is your thing, that is it's, uh, your idea, but it isn't. And whatever is of the flesh is definitely not spiritual reality. Spiritual reality is spiritual, not fleshly, because it comes from the Holy Spirit that is communicating with your spirit. To put it simply, spiritual reality is what one touches by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> This Holy Spirit is such a beautiful spirit, really. The thing which that one so touches is living and real. The conduct of a believer is not real if it is not in the Holy Spirit. His conduct can never be a substitute for the real thing before the Most High. And that's the whole uh, thing. Um, we have no clue that we are constantly creating substitutes for everything that is spiritual. It can neither help others nor edify himself. May our Father, the Most High, the Great I Am, the Father of this universe, be merciful to us that we may realize that to live in the Holy Spirit is to live in spiritual reality. Amen. Wow. Supply and reality. Wow, this can, this can be interesting. All right, let us see. Second Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 4. Especially shows us how there is supply where there is reality wow so second corinthians chapter 4 is a chapter you need to read with this in your mind um, especially shows us how there is supply where there is reality always bearing about in the body the dying of Mashiach, Yeshua, that the life also of Yeshua may be manifested in our body. This is verse 10. Where 
the dying of Yeshua is exhibited, there is the manifestation of the life of Yeshua. In other words, since the dying of Yeshua is in us, the life of Yeshua is also in us. This refers to those who know the dying of Yeshua and in whom the life of Yeshua is manifested. So this is very important to grasp. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. This is verse 12 of that same chapter 4 in 2 Corinthians. In verse 10, Paul speaks of the manifestation of life. Here in verse 12, he speaks of the supply of life. That which is manifested in us, we call life. But that which is manifested in others, we call supply. Wow, wait a minute. So, that which is manifested in us, we call life. That which is manifested in others, we call supply. The source is the same, since all come from the dying of Yeshua. Consequently, preaching without reality is empty and useless because it cannot supply the body of Mashiach. Only after the dying of Yeshua has worked in us can the life of Yeshua work in others. Hence, this is more than a matter of preaching or working, but is a matter of the supply of life. Of course, preaching has its proper place, but if it is not backed up by reality, it cannot supply life. So that is why it is good to know what it is to be a minister of the Most High's Living Word. And I have already got to know to roll out in-depth study course in that too. Um, when we bear in our bodies the dying of Yeshua, the body of Mashiach receives the supply. Where there is reality, there is supply. If we do not know the dying of Yeshua and have not quietly bo borne the, uh, the stake, then we will have no supply. Brothers and sisters, please remember that so far as spiritual reality is concerned, work is not what you do, but what you have passed through before the Most High. Wow! Work is not what you do, but what you have passed through through before the Most High. It is this which will automatically supply the body of Mashiach. If you know on your side what the dying of Yeshua is, the assembly on the other side will spontaneously receive supply because of this. We do not need to tell people that we have forgiven this or that, nor blow the trumpet that we have loved nor draw people's attention to how we have borne the stake. If we have touched reality, we will effortlessly supply other people. Wow! If we have touched reality, we will, effective, we will 
effortlessly supply other people. So you supply other people with out doing any effort for it. It does not matter if we are conscious of it or not. The fact remains, death worketh in us, but life in you. Death worketh in us, but life in you. Mr. Kitty? Mr. Kitty, eh? Yeah. Our difficulty lies in our knowing too much of teachings. We know too much of teachings. We act according to teaching. But there is no practi practical supply. Let us remember that supply is not an outward act, but an inward reality. If you had known before the Most High what the dying of Yeshua is, then the life of Yeshua would spontaneously work in the assembly. Wow, what it, this is such an interesting study. Where life is, there is supply. Where death is, there is no supply. For supply is the imparting life. Wow, for supply is the imparting of life, not the exhibiting of work, to be admired. Well, that is something we still do. We are admiring work. Supply is to build up people, not to build up the reputation that you have had such and such an experience. So maybe we need to be cautious with that too. So it is, um, supply is to build up people, not, not, not to build up the reputation that you have had such and such an experience. What is important is whether or not there is real supply. Each time you pass through the dying of Yeshua, some brothers or sisters will receive from you the supply of life. You see how far this goes? Do you understand that you lack deep understanding about this whole dying of Yeshua and what is truly implied in this, what, what the spiritual, the deep, deep, deep spiritual meaning is behind this whole deed that he has done. There is no need to wait until you publish your autobiography. At the time, we receive life from the Master. At that time, the assembly, the assembly is already being supplied with life. We need to know that many helps given transcend consciousness and feeling. When we have reality people, better said, when we have reality, people will be supplied whether we are conscious of it or not, 
for life is a fact. Whenever we are truly bearing the stake before the Most High and uh, before the Master, the body of Mashiach receives the supply. How can we comprehend what Paul says? So then death worketh in us, but life in you, if we are ignorant of what the supply of life is. Paul tells the saints in Colossae, Now I rejoice in my sufferings. I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake and fill up on my part that which is lacking of the affections of Mashiach in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the assembly. What is this? It is the supply of life. Having seen the body of Mashiach as one, there will naturally be supply. Hence, Paul is able to suffer for the sake of the body of Mashiach and to fill up on his part in his flesh that which is lacking of the afflictions of Mashiach. You cannot understand how the afflictions of Mashiach can be filled up if you have not seen that the body of Mashiach is one. Let us ask the master to open our eyes to see that the body is one. Whosoever really knows that the body is one cannot fail to see 1 Corinthians 4, 7. What hast thou that thou didst not receive? All we have had all we have has been received has been received from our father the most high and all is for the supply of the body the reality we personally touch before our father becomes the supply of the assembly the supply of the body exceeds the physical restrictions of communication Paul says to the assembly in Corinth, For I verily, being absent in body, but present in spirit. This is 1 Corinthians 5 verse 3. Because he has touched the reality of the body of Mashiach, therefore he may say his spirit is present with them just as his body was present with them before. This is no idealism. It is reality. Our having seen the ones of the body of Mashiach. Our spirit invariably is found there. This is called the supply of life and it transcends words and works and surpasses the limitations of physical communication. If we know our Father the Most High and are in contact with the Master, whatever we pass through automatically becomes the wealth of the body. What a pity that many believers live in the external realm when they work. There seems to be some supply but when they are not working there is no supply when they open their mouths they appear to be the most high's choice servants but when their mouths are shut they are no longer the most high's choice servants they are able to supply when they are appreciated when they are appreciated but cannot supply when they are misunderstood because they have not touched spiritual reality before the Most High. They fail to supply life to the body of Mashiach, yet there are those who are such that when people talk with them for but five minutes, those people receive 
a life supply through them. The body of Mashiach is a fact. Spiritual supply does not depend on shaking hands nor on conversation. If anyone has gone through some experience before the Most High, our Father, having received from our Father's hand the dying of Yeshua, he has already supplied the body of Mashiach. So, brothers and sisters, we supply the assembly with what we have known of the Most High, our Father, within. It is not that we try to supply, because if we try to supply, it is a man-created thing, and a man-created thing cannot supply another person to uh, give life or supply life, nor purposely aim at supplying the body of Mashiach, but that we are just naturally supplying the assembly. He who has touched reality has supply. He who has not touched reality does not have any supply. It is something which cannot be forced. Judging from the experience of Paul, we can truly say that supplying the body of Mashiach is a reality and not an act. If we have experienced reality before the Master, we will spontaneously supply the assembly with that reality. Only when we have real experience do we benefit the assembly. Real experience means experience coming from the Holy Spirit itself and thus from our Father itself. The words which Paul says are quite unique. We easily understand when he says, always a bearing about in the body, the dying of Yeshua, that the life also of Yeshua may be manifested in our body. But when he says this, so then death worketh in us, but life in you, we do not easily comprehend its meaning, not unless we know the oneness of the body of Mashiach, since the body is one. Whatever works in me, will naturally work in others. This is life and this is supply. Upon seeing this, we are exceedingly joyful because all which the members receive from the head is kept in the body and we are all enjoining this body. Brothers and sisters, if we have touched this reality, we will, we will not bemoan the poverty and barrenness of the assembly. Doubtless, so far as appearance goes, we have to acknowledge the poor and degraded condition of the assembly. We must confess that in outward appearance, individual believer, individual uh, groups of believers as well as individual believers have failed but whenever whenever we touch the reality of the assembly we immediately declare that the assembly is neither poor nor degraded it is not because of the failure of the individual believers and uh, individual groups of believers that we wealth the, that the wealth that the wealth of the assembly is diminished for day by day all which the members receive from the head is supplying the body so the assembly Paul touched this spiritual reality thus he could reprove the assembly in Corinth as well as supply their needs till we all attain unto the unity of the faith 
end of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High, unto a full-grown man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Mashiach. Ephesians 4.13 this word is rather difficult to understand outwardly and mentally for the assembly to attain to the unity of the faith seems something far distant and beyond the realm of possibility when we look at outward appearance who knows if the assembly will ever arrive at that point Well, I can say that for now, not many assemblies are able to arrive to that point because many have been infiltrated by evil and dark. Yet when we touch spiritual reality, we do not sense the need to ask such a question. We know that the assembly before the Most High is one and has never been divided. As soon as we touch the reality, all external questions disappear. Wow! So you can say, this is very, very learning. Um, if you still have questions about things, then you still didn't touch the reality, the spiritual reality in things because otherwise you do not have questions. So as soon as you have uh, touched the spiritual reality behind things, then you understand and then all your questions about it are gone. How can we supply if we have not seen this reality? Our supply begins the moment we see it. Hence, supply is based on touching the reality of the body as well as on the experience of the stake. Let us realize too that the supply of words is also based on the life we have already given to the assembly. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit will bear witness to what you express if what you say is what you already have given the assembly in life. But he will not bear witness to what you utter if it does not represent what you have received before the Father, the Most High. People receive help from your words only if you have first supplied them. with your life so people receive help from your words only if you have first supplied them with your life otherwise the help which words give is merely a bit of clarification for the mind since such help is but the produce of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the food of the assembly, though, is life. The supply of life is the one and only food of the assembly. The question is not what you can give, but how, how much you already have given to the assembly. What have you given of reality to the assembly? When you stand before the assembly, what is it that you have already supplied to her? If you have not touched reality, you will have nothing to supply the people. Only what is spiritual, which has reality behind the word, <clears throat> can supply the assembly. So, some believers deem the body of Mashiach to be only a parable. They have not seen the reality of the body and therefore have no way to supply it. 
There is no possibility of supplying the body if one has not seen it. It is with the body in view that the eating of the mouth is the eating of the body. The seeing of the eyes is the seeing of the body and the hearing of the ears is the hearing of the body. What a member receives, the body receives, no matter which brother or sister it is. Whatever he or she receives is also received by the body. We need to understand that body life is not only a corporate living, but a corporate life as well. If we fail to touch this reality, the assembly is but a doctrine and the body is just a parable. Accordingly, we have no way to supply the need. So brothers and sisters, do not forget that you are not an independent entity, but a member in the body of Mashiach. And whether one member suffereth, says Paul, all the members suffer with it. First Corinthians 12, verse 26. Is this empty word or fact? Paul is a man who has body consciousness. If he had not touched the reality of the body, he would not be able to utter such a word. And let us therefore ask the Most High to cause us to touch the root, which is the reality that we may spontaneously supply the church or the assembly, better said, because I rather prefer to say it like that instead of using the pagan word C-H-U-R-C-H. And then step three, question and reality. If we have not seen spiritual reality, we will obviously have many questions. Wow! If we have not seen spiritual reality, we will obviously have many questions. Suppose, for example, you hear things said about a person whom you have never met. Naturally, you will make in, um, inquiry about him from those who know him. But there is one person in this whole world whom you already know thoroughly without need of any inquiry. That person is your own self. You yourself are a reality which you know. Or again, suppose there is available for occupancy a house which you have never seen before. To know about it, you have to ask how many rooms it has, whether the windows are large enough, etc. But once you move into it and live there, you have no further questions to ask. Whatever is already clear need not to be asked anymore. In other words, if we live in the reality of a thing, we have no more questions. Questions. So if we live in the reality of a thing, we have no more questions. Only a person who does not know the body. All right. Of Mashiach will ask what it is. He who knows will not ask such a question. With regard to spiritual matters, we can clarify them to the extent of removing any spiritual difficulty, but we cannot make them to, uh, so clear as to present no problem to the human mind. Take preaching the living word as an example. We can preach till people are clear enough to believe, but we cannot preach till minds Till man's mind is fully satisfied. What did Nathanael or Nathaniel 
say when Philip told him that they had found him of whom Moses uh, or Moses Moshe in the law and the prophets had written said he can any good thing come out of Nazareth yet later when the master said to him before Philip called thee when thou wast under the fig tree I saw thee Nathanael or Nathanael Nathanael encountered reality whereupon he most naturally confessed thou art the son of the one and only living most high thou art king of Yeshurael for okay, cool. John 1 verse 45 to 49 he had touched reality and hence he had no more question this is how spiritual things are as soon as one touches reality he is enlightened within he knows inwardly whether or not he is able to explain it some passages in scripture appear to be easily misunderstood but if the Holy Spirit is present one is able to contact the spiritual reality with this there can be no misunderstanding Kitty. Kitty. and with this said I have come to the end of reading part two of this in-depth study series spiritual reality or obsession thank you so much for listening to it and um, I wish you all a Baruch day and thank you so much for doing a little donation and know that the kingdom of the Most High is thriving on giving and if you do a little donation you give something back to the kingdom because I work for the kingdom of the Most High our Father our universal Father of this universe as last I say Baruch Abba Bashem Yahuwah hallelujah hallelujah yahuwah hallelujah yahuwah hallelujah yahuwah